My series under Stories from the Trenches are war stories about things that happen in the escrow world. On some days, it is like deflecting and dodging mortar fire while trying to juggle buyers, sellers, and lenders, all of whom have their own agenda and are sometimes going in different directions. One such transaction started out smoothly, but suddenly, two weeks before closing, it took a turn for the dramatic as volleys of mortar fire were fired at us from the seller. He was an attorney whose preconceived notions of what is the law led us to question his legal background. We were forced to dodge and lobby back his fire in order for the transaction to close, all the while by keeping the buyer and his SBA lenders on track and out of the seller's issues. The transaction was a sale of a commercial property. The number of issues we encountered provided us with educational fodder for all of your consumption and highlights these war stories that we escrow professionals are subject to. The issues are separated into six short story videos. Here is the part that I am calling no escrow instructions, no work. This is part one of the saga. The seller signed the 24 page purchase and sale agreement, or we call it the PSA. The PSA stated that he would sign separate escrow instructions as requested by the escrow holder and that are consistent with the terms of the PSA. He then received my nine page escrow holders addendum to this PSA, which contained my general provisions and he refused to sign. His objection was that he signed the PSA already and that was enough. He did not have time to review my escrow instructions. And what if there was something in there that changed the P changes the PSA? Our response was that the purchase and sale agreement sets out the agreement between the buyer and the seller. It does not incorporate everything the escrow holder needs to work on and process. He should refer back to his PSA where there is a reference to the signing of separate instructions to be drawn by the escrow holder. These instructions enable the buyer and the seller and the escrow holder to work with each other and states clearly what the responsibilities of each party are. They also reflect the escrow holder's ability to act in accordance to general and escrow, and escrow law and particularly requirements that need to be fulfilled with respect to federal, state, county, and local laws. For instance, California Good Funds notification, California SB2 recording fee notification, the federal IRS 1099 reporting disclosures, the federal Foreign Investment in Real Property Act, the FERPTA disclosures, the state of California's tax withholding disclosures, and we have the preliminary change of ownership forms that we need to provide to the county. In addition, it might also include pre-sale inspection report requirements that some cities require when going through escrow. These things are not included most of the time in the PSA. So as we told him, the escrow instructions are your instructions that allows me to handle your transaction. The buyer has signed it, but without your signature, I do not have the authorization to go forward. I have to have mutually accepted and signed agreements from all my parties. If not, I'm going against established escrow law. If you don't sign, I won't be able to do your transaction. So after mulling this over for a few days, the seller signed the last page of my nine page escrow holders addendum where the signature block appears and sent that page to us. 
So what did we learn? First of all, the purchase and sale contract is the agreement between the buyer and seller. It is the offer to buy by the buyer and the acceptance to sell by the seller. Number two, the escrow instructions, on the other hand, are the instructions from the buyer and the seller to escrow. It is also an acknowledgement that escrow has to handle certain items that may not be reflected clearly or concisely in the purchase and sale agreement, but are important to satisfy federal, state, county, city laws to complete a transaction. It also states the responsibilities of the escrow holder. Thirdly, all paperwork submitted to escrow, whether it's the PSA or the escrow instructions or amendments to the contract must be mutually agreed to and signed by both parties. No instructions, no work. This is Juliana Tu from Viva Escrow and I thank you for watching. What's next? Part two is coming up as we struggle with a concept of blue ink versus black.